Jane here with Country Diggers. Today I'm going to go into the Ranger Cap Gun and I'll be reading from Nichol NicholsCapGuns.com. Uh, I found this one out dump digging. I don't know if this holster goes with it or not, but this is a leather holster and it's got some horse on it. Got a horse on it. Um, but it's a leather holster. I don't know if it went with the gun or not. It, I found them separate. But um, I fixed it up real nice. And I spray painted it silver. And then I spray painted the handle white. And then I used a crayon, a brown crayon to color in the Indian. So that's pretty neat, I think. And, um, but I'll be telling you some about the Ranger's Cap Gun. Ranger Cap Gun. All right. I'm going to be reading from NicholsCapGuns.com. And I put pictures up and everything. So here we go. In some cases, QSAN, spelled K-U-S-A-N, is Kusan. And then in some cases, Kusan is Kusan dash Nichols. This might sound like double talk, but that's just the way it is. In 1965, Kusan bought out Nichols Industries, but kept using the Nichols brand. So for quite a while, things didn't change very much, but gradually, little by little, the guns changed. And the Nichols part was edged out, and they became more Kusan. More double talk? Not really. You can usually look at the guns and tell the difference. For instance, now there was a lot of riveting and screws that weren't necessarily used. And there might be dummy bullets or no bullets at all. However, this is still another brand, and some of the QSAN cap guns that were first produced were some beautiful guns. All right, well, now we go on to the Special Forces military set. Um, I put photos up of this. <clears throat> um, this uh, the photo is of the military set, and it says, of Nichols QSAN effort uh, way after his uncle Tally left the company and at about the same time QSAN went strictly from Nashville, Tennessee. The top photo shows the complete set and the bottom composite photo shows sort of the documentation that it is actually Nicholas QSAN or Nichols Cusan, excuse me. It's kind of a sign of the times that it was labeled for ages four and over. Whereas the liberals of our day that uh, say that playing with guns is counterproductive to good mental health. And many, many idiots believe them. <laughs> I wonder how my family grew up to be such good citizens. I wonder how my family did too because we played cops and robbers with cap guns. We played cowboys and Indians. We played war. Man, we're such bad people. I tell you, the kids of today didn't know what they were missing. But anyway, uh, on with the Special Forces Military Action Set. Um, the photo in this one is slightly different, is a slightly different military action set from QSAN that has two hand grenades. And then on with the QSAN burp gun, it's basically a Thompson submachine gun. It sends sparks out the front. There were several guns on the market that did this. Some, most of them came from Japan at the time. And the QSAN uh, dash nickels this cap gun is a perfect example of the transitional stage between pure nickels and pure kusan. Some of these 
transitional guns were extremely high quality and are quite rare and still make up the entire set. The chances are pretty strong that this gun came from the mid-1960s after the sale to QSAN, perhaps as late as 1968. And uh, we go on down to a rare cap gun and holster set. Um, this gun is one of the transparent pearl grips with the circle end cast into it uh, and the dummy bullets. Um, most people will have to just settle for seeing this gun as a photo because they've never seen the real thing either. <laughs> All right, and then the next is a Stallion 45 with the molded end in the grips, circle end in the grips. And this is a collector series box. And um, this version of the Stallion 45 actually uses uh, the two-piece bullets. And they say that um, they have seen many more of this version of the Stallion with the dummy bullets than this one that still has the two-piece bullets. So he thinks that the two-piece bullet version is more rare, the more rare of the two. Okay, and um, it also says that it was common for QSAN to dumb down the cap guns in the latter days so it would seem plausible that they tried to save money by not having the bullets, but just casting them as part of the cylinder. Okay, <clears throat> and then you have um, a photo of the Coke model 1861, and on the back of the, flipped it on the back, and it's, a Stallion Model 61 box back of its collector series. That then you'll see the gun in the shadow box. Okay. Um, one of the latter offerings from Kusan was um, a generic. They think one of the guns was generic, and um, it's called the how the west was won uh metal cap pistol holster set how the west was won hmm. generic all right and um then we have a uh, one <clears throat> the same gun that uh was pictured above the um at, but um the stallion 45 but it shows the loading gate open and the cylinder where the two-piece bullets would go. So, okay. And then we got a really rare Black Stallion 45 MK-11 with the molded end grips. It looks to be a dead, it looks to be dead mint which is common with uh, some collection pieces. This was in the latter days of the QSAN era. Okay. Then we got QSAN Scout Rifle. There were a lot of rifles made by various companies that were similar to this one. Nichols made the Model 94, and there is the Long Ranger version and others, and, and this is just one shown in the picture with the um, rifles. And then we got the Stallion 45 again. Uh, they presented present this gun again because after all, it is one of the best that Cuson made. And also to demonstrate that if you folks have good photos of guns that are already on here but are worthy 
they might just appear on their website, okay, as well. Okay, and um, then we have the box of the Mustang 500. Um, <clears throat> it said everybody's best guess is that this is a very late uh, QSAN edition of the Mustang 500. And maybe their box contract had run out and they had a bunch of extra Stallion 45 MK2 bo MK-11 boxes and so they just put extra labels on them and used them. Okay. And then we got um, here's a really funny fact. Depending on your monitor, okay, this photo might just be bigger than the real thing. It was really a very small cap gun. Uh, and they're talking about the Nicholas, I mean, Nichols Brave. The Nichols Brave Captain. Okay. Um, notice that this one actually says Brave on it. And doesn't have any scroll work. It is an earlier version than the one just below. But was still in the last years of Q San Nicholas. Uh, Nichols, sorry about that. Um, as you will notice that it says that Nichols is a subsidiary of Q San in Nashville. How the mighty are fall. <laughs> okay. And then we got the uh, fast draw gun holster set, gun and holster set. Uh, it's another one of those transition guns that basically said Nichols, but was actually a QSAN. And then we got uh, the Brave again, Nicola, Nichols Brave. Uh, this version of the Brave is not the same one as during the Nichols only years and doesn't even say Brave on it, okay? Then we go down here to the, uh, the late model QSAN cap gun that some would think of as a mystery gun, but it is quite legitimate. We don't know, we don't really know why there are so many of them. Maybe it was a prototype. More likely, it was a last ditch effort by QSAN to stay in business in their last days. In any case, it is really an oddball. It has the same internal cap feeding mechanism as the Tommy gun and the identical olive drab plastic that is listed under the regular Nichols cap guns in the rifle section. However, that gun itself was released right at the very tail end of uh, his Uncle Tally's association with Cusan. <clears throat> and then he was completely out and moved down the street where he formed Tally Ho Plastics, which became very successful tool and dye company that led to countless other similar, successful similar companies that are still there to this day in Jacksonville, Texas. Quite an unusual find if you can find one. Okay, that, uh, it says Luger on it. So, if you find one that says Luger on it with that shape and everything, you might have a rare one. All right. Then we got uh, the chrome, a uh, picture of a, the chrome in the same Luger style handgun that was I just showed you but in the chrome version this is in the chrome version um, it's a, uh, he changed the uh, color photo into a black and white since the gun wasn't supposed to have anything but chrome and black on it but that was because the photo was so pink <laughs> okay I'm not sure he says, uh, I'm not sure if this is a true representation, 
but it is the best I can do for now, okay? And then we go on to, and finally, here is the black version of the Luger by QSAN. It is the rarest of the color variations. Okay, so if you metal detecting or dump digging, you find one of these that I've showed you in the pictures of the Luger made like that, then you got a rare one. All right, and then we go on to the Nichols uh, QSAN Silver Pony. Here's the, the latest version of the Silver Pony, and it was sort of a hybrid between a couple of smaller gun designs. And he lists, he lists the QSAN section because it really wasn't one of... Um, their design, it wasn't really one of um, um, Nichols' designs, okay? And then it's got a picture, again, of the Silver Pony, okay? <clears throat> and then the Derringer. I think I've got, I think I found a, a, a Derringer, the Nicholas Derringer, or Nichols Derringer. I think I found it. And I'll do something on it later. But um, I'll tell you a little bit about it. Um, it. Here's something that I have never seen in real life. And I'm a Nichols, he says. <laughs> a Derringer with gray grips. I think. I don't, I'm not sure what mine has. I'd have to look again. And since it's. MOC, MOC, I don't know, then you can't say that it is fake, can you? Okay. Obviously, this was made in the last days of Cusan. Cusan. In this case, the MOC Derringer actually is worth as much as the ammo. Imagine trying to sell one of these today. The liberal media would go completely apocalyptic. <laughs> Notice that in this example, uh, Nichols is called a subsidiary of QSAN of Nashville. It doesn't even mention Jacksonville. Okay. But I think I have got that. I'm not sure if it was this, it had the silver grips or not because the, um, I don't think it did. Um, I'd have to look at it again. Anyway, we go on to uh, the ranchos. Uh, picture of the ranchos up there. Um, at least the name of the cap gun is still on the side. This cap gun is essentially the same basic gun as the Brave. But these are blued and are mocked. Okay, it, it says what my, uh, the MOC, it says what it is right here. Mint on card, okay. And then it goes to the Kingston Western Outfit. Um, a Kingston cowpuncher set. It's hard to believe that a really sophisticated outfit like Kingston, Keystone, was reduced to this. Keystone uh, normally made really fancy holster sets uh, until I saw this set. I didn't know they incorporated um, Nichols QSAN cap guns into any of their sets. But in the last days, most of the cap guns or holster companies got really desperate to sell anything. Okay? And then there's the uh, Buffalo Billy. Um, it says the uh, this is a um, Nicholas Spitfire that was Nichols Spitfire that was altered a little. It made it in later latter years after his uncle Tally left the company. Okay, and. Um, uh, the next picture is this same basic Spitfire, but in a series they call the Collector Series. 
which included quite a few guns of the Husam Nichols years. This Spitfire without the four stock doesn't even have the name Spitfire on it. What were they thinking? What's the point in creating a brand name only to suddenly ignore it? It's just his opinion, but I think it was a dumb move. <laughs> I'll probably get into trouble for saying that, but everybody's got an opinion. This is still America, isn't it? <laughs> for now, maybe. <laughs> <clears throat> and then we go to um, the Nichols Q Sam, how the West was one dealer sample. Okay, this particular mint on card example of a Spitfire was only meant for dealers. The stick on the right <clears throat> was on the back of the card. And I guess the dealer would take orders for it. This was in the last days of QSAM. <clears throat> okay, then we got um, um, the Little Scout. Little Scout. Uh, here's another basically Spitfire that was made in latter years of QSAM when they were still putting nickels on the packages and guns, but we're now letting folks know that Nichols was a subsidiary of QSAN, Inc. of Nashville, Tennessee. Notice that this one is in the copper flavor. <clears throat> okay. And then we got little Bronco next. Here's a rifle that is very similar to the Nichols Model 94 rifle. There are a few cosmetic differences, plus it has two other guns that they can't quite identify. <clears throat> they might easily be Braves or Ranchos. Okay, and then we go to the uh, uh, Nichols Ranger, which was the one I showed you that I have. Okay, and it shows pictures all the way down. <clears throat> and, uh, excuse me, let me get a drink. Okay, it, um, these were last-ditch efforts from QSAM. The Ranger, <clears throat> Top Ham 50, and the Mustang 250. You might easily argue that the Mustang 250 is simply the larger gun with a longer ba a barrel than the Ranger and different grips. The Mustang 250 was also made earlier than the Ranger. The funny thing is that as basic as these last cap guns were, they are still better than most of what you see today. Now, I like it. I like my, um, my Ranger cap gun. It's got the scroll on the barrel and everything. And it's got the Indian on the handle. And it's in great shape. It really is. And I fixed it up nice, I think. But we go on. And the Top Ham 50, made in the days when Cusan was getting ready to go out of business. They just didn't know it yet. <laughs> okay. And then we have some... Um, Cusan Circle O caps. Okay, and then we got the Buck Rogers holster set is the last one. This must be from the last days of Cusam uh, before even they sold out. It still says Jacksonville and not Nashville, Tennessee. So it must have been before they sold out. It's not really a cap gun, but it deserves to be listed here. It is made out of plastic. This example is dead mint and has never been out of the box. Okay. Well, hope you all enjoyed that. And um, maybe I'll do some more Cap Gun History soon. All right. See you back soon. Bye.